computer, I say it for everybody, I would like to have our integral chats public on my website at least, and uh, probably also on YouTube, Also, we can also still decide to have it unlisted there, because I think we need to, to, to inspire people. We need to, you know, to, to have other people uh, give the possibility to other people to listen to, to what we are saying, and then they say, ah, something like this, uh, I thought too. And not everybody is ready to show up and do, yeah. do that, uh, pub, so, yeah. show their faces and be there, you know? So they can be sort of from, the, from behind the curtain. They can go into the, uh, into the room and, and listen to what we are saying. And I do think that can be inspiring. Maybe yeah. not, maybe. And I find, uh, since I do videos, I find it so much better than writing back and forth, back and forth, you know. <laughs> it's sort of boring. So at least we can talk together. So let's, um, we start again. You, Karen, you can say a little bit about you. And we present ourselves. Also, the others are supposed to come in six minutes, but we can already start with a sort of introduction to to our, whatever, okay. whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay. Well, my name is Karen. I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm a newbie. I don't um, know a lot about inter Integral. Um, I actually um, have been a subscriber to it for two years. Surprisingly, my membership just ran out this week. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm really wanting to learn more and understand how it works. I think this is awesome that we're kind of together talking about it. I think we learn better when we're, we have a mentor and someone helping us rather than just completely reading about it. And of course, the videos help on the, and the website for sure. Yeah. But um, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> That's um, wonderful. Uh, hi, I'm Damiano from Milan, Italy. Um, this is actually my first time having like a group conversation with people who, with integral people. Uh, the only other person I've ever talked about integral theory live was Ryan, uh, yeah. one of the other members of the forum. So this is very come. exciting for me because I've been obsessing about integral theory for 10 years now. Mm. Oh. And in just in the last months, I'm kind of feeling like I understand it only in the last months. And so oh, now I have <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> and, and actually that's what I want to do. I think I think I can, uh, there are some concepts that sounds incredibly theoretical, and but if you apply them to very specific thing, that they're really straightforward. But I think oh, that we awesome. miss a little bit of this, just taking a random topic and trying to explore it integrally. So I'm just really happy to to hear and uh, geek out on integral theory and everything. Yeah, that's wonderful, and I I can relate very much to that because I came into integral. I'm Heidi, as I don't know if I said that, <laughs> also in Italy, but not Italian. Are you Italian, Damiano? Uh, half British, but um, yeah. grew up in Italy. Mainly. Because I hear the English is not like Italian accent of English. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Germans pointing that out for some reason. <laughs> I'm German and I definitely have a German accent <laughs> in Italian and in English. So yeah. that's what it is. That, that will never go away. No, 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 no. <laughs> So I keep it, and sometimes I get confused among <laughs> three languages, and I talk to the wrong people, the wrong language. And anyway, yeah, I am an integral. Uh, I, I I came across integral the first books I think in ninety seven, and then I really began to read more deeply. And what I really hooked me it it was I think I said it last time no no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I began with Grace and Grit and No Boundaries, and then Up from Eden. That was for me the bow, yeah, that, that really hooked me. And then I, I think I said it last time, but we didn't record it, so I, I can say it again. I felt like nobody is here to talk with, you know, about these things. And I was not able even to explain what it is, you know, also. <laughs> I didn't know what it is, but I was really attracted to it. I had the, the ah feeling, you know, ah, no, yeah. that's why. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so 
Then I went oh. to the German meetings. They had since 2000, they had once a year a meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning there were 20, 25 people. And then now it is conferences with 300 or something. Anyway, I went every year, trip to Germany, just to meet people who I didn't have to explain that, uh, what I'm up to, you know? The, yeah. the, and real understanding I got, I think it was in 2006, when a women's group came together for a week <clears throat> in, I think in Austria uh, somewhere, uh, in a country house of one of the members. And there we really did sort of this practical work. We put the four quadrants on the floor and we had pictures and, and or, or poet, not poetry, texts or whatever. And then we tried to figure out what, what quadrant is that? And, you know, where, where do you put this sort of expression and this picture? And, and this was really, really, really interesting. And then also the same thing with the spiral, which mm -hmm. sort of expression is, uh, is that a red uh, egocentric state, if somebody says like this, or a photo and so on. And this was really the beginning for me to understand it really. Before it was sort of attraction of, yeah, there is something, but then reading some, especially the later books, that, that was sometimes a little bit tiresome, you know, with all the repetitions, which, oh, here's Ryan, that's good. Hey there. So Ryan, you guys. And also Karen for his. Uh, Ryan is, oh, hello. Hey. We are sort of checking already in. And we are doing it on recording today. So we have then uh, everybody's uh, introduction. On, uh, so we don't have to do it every time. I was just talking about my uh, uh, learning of integral that you begin to understand it when you do it practically, really. You know, and you have a... And that's what we did. And since then, uh, yeah, I always went to the conferences. We went to the Hungarian conference twice. And I first, in the first one, I did a workshop on singing, on, on voice, on my voice training, integral voice training. And then the second one we did on conscious aging. And this time we couldn't go. Hey, Paul. Hello. And yeah, and then we did the, the Wisdom Factory and with my husband, for him, I was the first one uh, he met in person as an integralist. And when we were together, we talked all the time about how can you see that and how is that? And, and, we all, and it was so great. And I think part of why I initiate that is uh, because I want to have people to talk that <laughs> way again, as my husband died about uh, eight months ago. So I don't have anybody. It's still in Italy, Damiano. There yeah. is not many people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I need to plan a trip to Narni. Yeah, yeah, do that. Paradiso Integrale is my, my house called, you know? Oh, wow, nice. And, and people in Italy, Pane Integrale, so bread is called <laughs> Integrale. And everybody, when it's whole grain, you know, everybody thinks the house has to do with Pane <laughs> Integrale, but it has not. <laughs> okay, so welcome, Karen. Would you like to um, first uh, introduce yourself? Oh, we don't hear you. Uh, we have to unmute the microphone. Yeah. No. That is un okay. So Ryan, if you would like to to go. Sure. I I was just uh, <laughs> talking about this. Um. Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, great to see. I actually know everyone here except for Paul and Karen Satterley. So uh, good to see uh, all of my people I've interviewed <laughs> here <laughs> and happy to see everyone connecting and uh, it's definitely a nice way to spend a Sunday morning, early Sunday morning here in Oregon. So um, yeah, nice to, nice to see everyone. Uh, and Karen Voorhees. Hi, Karen. There you go. Hi. There we go. Okay. There, there. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have a very high Karen density within this room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, before we go to Karen, uh, Ryan, just for the records, talk a little bit about your way to integral and what you are doing. So we have it on the records. Sure, yeah. So um, I, I got in uh, uh, integral when I was like 15, 16. Um, my mom was interested, so she ordered some of the tapes. And I listened to Ken Wilber, had no idea what the hell he was talking about, whole lines, that kind of stuff. Uh, then somehow it kind of stuck with me and I got more into it when I was 17, mostly for the spiritual part of it. And then I went to college and stopped studying for about four or five years. And then I got into it again uh, when Trump got elected <laughs> because I was um, interested in the political stuff more than the spiritual stuff. So that kind of piqued my interest. And uh, lately I've, I've just been focusing on building community and building community here in Oregon and uh, in Portland. I uh, met a lot of nice people and a lot of community built on the uh, Integral uh, Forum, like with all of you and what we're doing today. And interviewing people has been awesome and just connecting with people around the world. So that's usually how I uh, spend my time. And it's when, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm, what I'm doing now and uh, happy to be here. Great. So Karen, now to you and then to Paul. Hi, yeah, I, can you hear me now? Can all hear me? Yes, good. Yes, I've been reading Ken Wilber since 1982. I was just uh, finishing my PhD in medieval studies, and I'd started meditating seriously, and I stumbled across Ken Wilber's books. He'd published three at that time, and ever since, how, many, how long ago is that? Ever since then, I've read each book he's written as he published it, pretty much, so mm -hmm. I've followed all along, and then in the wake of the 2016 election here, <laughs> um, actually I'd already started writing a novel that I, I, actually I had already started writing a novel by the time of the 2016 elections that I was, with which I am hoping to take integral mainstream, you know, a novel that has mainstream interests, but the surface structure, the, the surface structure being a groovy, entertaining novel, but the deep structure being integral. and. I've talked about that with Ryan in one of his interviews. And then Trump got elected and I went, oh my God, Trump is the antagonist in my novel. I mean, there's so many matches, there've been so many synchronicities. So that really goosed me uh, about getting very serious and professional about getting this novel out in the world. But I've been, um, Integral is my, int it's, it's the, deep structure of my entire approach to the world. It tallies exactly with my whole meditation path and what I think I've learned about life, the human psyche, spirituality. Ken Wilber's done all the hard work for us, mm -hmm. making it all make sense in the terms of Western mainstream science philosophy. It all fits together. So it's um, integral theory is my own deep structure for approaching life. So. That's enough for now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, hey, Karen, now we have three Karens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to need numbers. Let's, yeah, let's first, uh, Paul, if you want to, to introduce yourself. Um, yeah, I'm from England. Um, I think I discovered Ken Wilber when I was, I was at uni, so I was like 19 or something like this. And um, it was like just such a kind of blast of fresh air um like just all this kind of meaning and purpose and i i got quite into enlightened next with andrew Cohen, and they kind of really pushed that kind of evolutionary trend pretty hard um and it was it was an interesting contrast because i was doing a film at uni and it was basically just dominated by kind of postmodernism, just kind of all this analyzing language and kind of saying that everything's a bit arbitrary so that was um a kind of young learning curve to kind of bump up against professors and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I was very interested in it in my early days, like kind of, I think spiritually and philosophically. Um, and since then I've kind of, I've ended up dealing with a fair amount of uh, trauma. So I kind of went down the therapy route and the, the emotional route. Um, and I think kind of, over the years, I'm about 31 now, of kind of having uh, still the political and the kind of spiritual and all this kind of stuff, but I think having a, a more of a uh, maybe personal emotional flavor to, to integral as well. Um, one of the things I'm really grateful about from uh, these calls is um, like it originally came out from this post of lonely at the top, 
um, which I d definitely kind of relates to me. Like I, I often end up dealing with a lot of greens in emotion and all this kind of stuff and dealing with like uh, kind of alienation or having my growth edge kind of either pathologized or just like, uh, I guess wrestling with like, oh, what can I share with people and what can I not? And I find talking to integral people just helps so much because I feel this passion, but also it's, um, I find it, it's actually easier to kind of map out where people are to be kind of, to do the transcend and include. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Now, Karen, num number three. <laughs> Would you like to, yeah. Yes. Well, I'm only here because my name is Karen, and uh, and it's the group of Karens now. Um, so um, I'm in Austin, Texas. I'm an acupuncturist, and I have had a fair amount of trauma in my life as well, and um, found Integral and Wilbur uh, probably 2004 and have been very interested in the work and it just made so many things fall into place and make sense um, in my uh, world. And like Paul, I believe you just said, I'm surrounded by lovely greens and um, I'm a green as well and tippy toeing into the, the integral as well. And um, I just, um, I have always been interested in, in self in, in personal growth and self growth, I guess. And I know I'm not real articulate right now. I'm making a pot of soup. I have friends coming over in a little while. So I'm making a wonderful pot of soup. I'm just glad to be here and glad to share. Good. Thank you. So now we are seven people and I would like you to, um, articulate a little bit what your ideas is, what we could do in the group, what you would like to do. And then later we will talk about uh, when to meet, how to organize this all, because I don't feel like uh, that I want to impose it. The first few times, maybe yes, but then we, we should find uh, an agreement. So if you like, uh, just take the mic and, and say what you would expect from the group, what you could, um, give us input and suggestions, okay? Self-selected, the speakers. <laughs> um, well, I'll jump in one possibility. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Can anybody hear me? Am I speaking? Yes, okay. Yep. Um, one possibility just to get us started is to propose a topic, just to get us started talking about the topic, like somebody come up, it just, just have a topic we get started about for each meeting. Or if people are up for it, this is what we do at my Unitarian Church group, have somebody do a five minute or 10 minute presentation and then the discussion starts around that. But I'm feeling that would be just to get us started if we don't come up with any better ideas in the meantime. Because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kind of groping at that because that's what I would be doing at church if I was going to church instead of talking to you people today. But this, this feels like something that's going to come together in a different way. Um, this is just a way to get us jump started if we don't think of anything else over and out. I agree, but what I would also be interested, what sort of topic, what sort of thema would you, so to make a list, I, I begin to write a list, what oh, people are interested in, uh, so we can have them something to oh, choose. Let's break, let's, you want to brain, start brainstorming lists of topics? Uh, I think that's a good idea. How to deal with, how to deal with the irritating side of green. <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's like collectively the one that we all have an analogy to. Any, any, anywhere below is fine, like, you know, Nazis and all that. Those guys we get, but the pluralists, yeah. those weirdos. Yeah, Yeah, I think, yeah, I know it gets under my skin because of the part of me that's still very much there. And, you know, now that I've gone back to the church of my youth, Unitarian Universalists, which is, has always been, I mean, the epitome of green. They've done so much social action, which is why I went back to them in the wake of the 2016 election. But it's so much of 
the irritating side of it that drove me away many years ago. And I'm finding that I'm dealing with the, that coming up inside me. How do I deal with it? Um, you know, deal with my own reactions, meet them in a loving and compassionate way. That means I've got to work through my own stuff as it comes up. So anyway, that's just, yeah. I'd like to hear what some of you have to say. I can blither on forever, but I won't inflict any more on you now. <laughs> Um, for me, that kind of opens up a little bit of like spiral dynamics. Um, I know for me personally, like watching, like Jeff Solzman often does a pretty good thing of this, of like being able to talk about cultural politics or maybe experience of the the different levels I find uh, really useful. It's such a kind of like rich tapestry of um, all these places where people are at. I know personally, I find like this um, being integral is like really complex. Like you look in your, your history or your kind of constellation through the all these kind of things and they can just be like all over the place um mm -hmm. so I'd, I'd put that as the one thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll just uh i'll just mention since we were on the topic of green i i really like so here, here's kind of my green response is i would love to talk about a lot of green issues from a minority perspective, and I'm going to play the full-on race card here. I'm going to go full-on. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. You know, given that I'm usually the only minority in a lot of integral circles, I, I feel like I have a slightly different perspective on some of these things than other people. So I'd really like to share that. And you know, I hear Ken and Corey talking about all these things. And you know, just to go full-on identity politics for a moment, like I do feel I do agree with 99.9% .9 of everything people say and the criticisms of Green, but there is like 1% where I feel like when people are not minorities and haven't experienced certain things, they do forget about certain perspectives. And I'd like to bring some of those perspectives and have a nuanced discussion about identity and race, kind of my forte, mm -hmm. okay. and just offer that to the group. Great. Maybe that could be one of the topics yeah. if, if we decide to go that way, that we could lead I, I, one of these groups with. Yeah. So, Shall we shall we explore further the green or brainstorm further no. about uh, ideas? I think green. No, I think let's it, first. It, everybody has a go, and then uh, that is green. But it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Damiano. So um, I, I wanted to touch uh, one of the, the things that Paul mentioned is just the whole idea of you know, therapy and healing and therapeutic process. And uh, I even posted it on the forum, like it, what does an integral approach to uh, psychotherapy, for example, or, or your own sort of path look in terms of an actual protocol that can guide me in, you know, all the countless things that we can do to fix ourselves or grow or whatever. Uh, I feel that sometimes other than identifying some main categories, uh, you don't really get a lot from uh, mm. the, the material that we have out there that clearly helps you identify almost as a protocol where you should work on. And I think that that's an interesting area to explore because it falls into the category of making it practical. Uh, you know, how, how does someone use it within that context? And it, the second thing that I would propose is just any concept of practical applications of integral. So for example, with Ryan, we had a conversation about entrepreneurship or uh, we could talk about teaching, but I think that, that it would be really interesting to, to sort of think of how we can uh, make good examples of those uh, applications. And then I'll launch a third one since we're brainstorming is to really just like pick a topic from the news, like a hot topic from the news and just to collectively try and come up with a, a description of it in which we have consensus uh, supported by all the different levels and cultures and things that we represent our own understanding of uh, integral theory. I think that that would be beneficial for people to have, you know, pre-made integral perspective on certain things. That doesn't mean that they are the valid ones, but it just can help you in practice imagining things. So these are my three suggestions. Great. I'm so happy to hear you guys coming up with suggestions because that's 
I, I wasn't really prepared to do that, but I'll second Karen's, um, uh, I shared this with the group last week, I go to a Presbyterian church <clears throat> and I was left there and um, a very green group, very wonderful, loving, aging boomer population group. And um, we have a leader who is a genius. I think he's probably on the spectrum and he's brilliant. And he's so green, our, our, our church really struggles to keep it together. And um, so uh, I am welcome all these topics and um, with uh, a focus on um, understanding green. Well, I'll jump in and say that all these ideas are great. And just as um, someone starting out and learning, I really like the practical idea. And, and as Paul named a few things, too, that were super interesting. But learning more about ourselves and the different levels and exploring like one topic, you really get a handle of how to use this skill. And that's that I think that's really valuable. Okay, I have written that down and I will write it into the next, um, let's say, letter which I sent out. Or I can also put it on the, on the, on the thread in the, <clears throat> in, um, in, in, the, in the Integral Life Forum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the next thing, I know, Ryan, at this time of the day, you can only every second... Uh, Sunday. So there is a question if we should offer two different days, maybe. And just to to check, there are still other two or three people who wanted to come. So, but they have done, find out. Um, how could we do this with the days? Generally, Sunday this time would be good for, do you know, is it regularly for you, Ryan, or not? These other uh, more or less, um, it's it's been a little irregular because my other buddies I meet with have been doing other things. But um, generally speaking, but but I also add in that we're also looking to expand that group, so that one's also uh, subject to change. I mean, yeah. So I'll keep so, you posted. So so shall we just leave it on this time on Sundays as a reference point, and you see how you can manage that? I'm fine with that. How is it for you all the time of the day on Sundays? Uh, this, <clears throat> I would not be able to attend very often because ordinarily I played hooky from church to, uh, mm -hmm. to join you all here. This is, usually I'm at church. This is my chosen field to be active in the world and it's uh, uh, important for a number of reasons. So if it stayed at this time, I would be you know, like maybe once every two months and I'd love to be a regular. So yeah. I would vote for another time if possible. Time is what? What time is it in your place? I'm on Pacific Standard Time, like Ryan, so it's 11 a.m. for me now. So what time 12, would be for you 12. earlier in the morning? Um, not earlier, um, later on a Sunday or on some other day, like um, after 2 p.m. on a Sunday or some other day would work best for me. Well, for us, it will be a little late, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. So how is other days for you, Saturday, for instance? You yes. want to go out Saturday evening often, no? <laughs> I, I'm, not a, I'm not a going out person, but I know maybe others of you are. What would work for me on Sundays would be like really early for Pacific time, like at eight, seven or eight in the morning. But uh, after that, I'm at church for like five hours. I'm active in a lot of things there. So how is that for the American-based people? Seven, eight in the morning Pacific time would be, uh, early. yeah, but who is more mountain time is already better. <laughs> uh, that would be even earlier for mountain or central or eastern. I don't mind eastern. I'm, I'm an early bird. I'm up very early. Well, seven Pacific would be nine central and ten. Oh, that's right. That's right. Eastern. Yeah. So that's right. It would work for me. I, I go to church at 1045. I would be um, perhaps putting on makeup or <laughs> whatever, what? but I could do uh, that. What time would that be, Eastern? 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, that doesn't work for me. On Sundays? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is not good for you. Damiano, for you? 
For me, uh, Sunday anytime is absolutely perfect. Uh, I would avoid Saturday if, if it possible, uh, mm -hmm. unless, unless say we start two hours earlier, so that by eight we're finished. So, uh, mm -hmm. or any other day of the week, but that, that then becomes a bit harder with, with the work, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm flexible. Uh, maybe we can also launch a doodle uh, online where we all pick yeah. dates so we can see where we match the most. But so we, uh, how is it for you, Paul? Sunday is good too. It's only Karen Saturday is not so good on Sunday. Unless yeah, it's pretty, yeah, I'm pretty easy going generally. I don't have a particularly busy social life and I work for myself, so I have quite a lot of time. There was, um, I don't know if it's relevant yet, but I'd even be like, I'd be perfectly fine meeting like twice a week. Like some of the kind of talking to integral kind of makes me feel more sane. Um, <laughs> so I think, I'm I'm probably the easiest one of the group. I mean, I'm in uh, England, so it's uh, nearly 7.30. So if it was kind of like getting towards midnight, sort of pushing it. But mm. other than that, I'm generally pretty, pretty free. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can try to rearrange some things. I mean, I want to be, a, I mean, I think I'll really enjoy this, but we can give it a, we can give it a shot. So we do it next time, two hours earlier. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we try that. So we have the organization now. I today have recorded and I ask for the permission if we can, as I said before, put it in our website under integral chat so that other people can see it and maybe um, be inspired by what we are saying because I think not everybody wants to be either on camera or on, on not even on audio and they might get... Um, benefit when they listen others to talk about the topics because I think the topics are more or less for all of us <laughs> the same ones. So is it okay with you? So Heidi, I was just going to go back to the time. You were saying next time we would meet two hours earlier. Than today. Yes, that w would not work for me. That would be uh, 11 o'clock. We were talking about uh, it would be four hours earlier. No, four yeah. hours is too much for them, I think. The Californians. Yes. Yeah, I would need it to be an hour earlier than that even. I would need it to wrap up at nine o'clock Pacific time. Yeah, so like I thought start if, at eight, at eight yeah. I'd need it to start at eight Pacific time or earlier. Yeah, so I thought if we start at 7 a.m., that would ah. be 9 a.m. here, and, and we've been starting at 1 p.m. here, so that's four hours earlier. I think that's what we had been talking about. Everybody, put your thinking hat on and let me, let me, let me know. So, if I'm... so you're saying to do it even earlier, not just two hours, four hours earlier. Is that correct? Four hours. Yes. Okay for me. For me, it's okay. It's for the Pacific people who will have to jump out of bed. Ryan. What about you, Ryan? <laughs> you're gonna make me abandon my deep causal state of dreaming. <laughs> no, causal <laughs> state is done by then. You're dreaming at the time of the morning. So. Oh yeah, and you can tell us it's about done. your dreams, and then there we go. <laughs> I won't be present for the first half an hour of the conversation. <laughs> you have the coffee. You like the coffee. That's right. Yeah. I'll have, have the coffee. Then. <laughs> Would it be for you, Karen? Uh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll figure it out. It, I don't know what time that would be for me. Like, if you tell me your location, I can what? tell you what time it is, Karen. What's that? What, what, what time? Where, uh, what, what is your Eastern. location? So I can tell you what time it would be. Eastern. It's 2.27 here right now. Uh, give, would, me a, give me a CT so I look it on a uh, calendar. Florida. Okay. It would be 10 a.m. Florida time. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, it was what we were talking about. Yeah, that's not great. But, yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. What would be great for you in Florida? Well, this, Florida, this, what time, would be great? This, this time works for me. Um, Saturday mornings work for me um, at 10 a.m. But, um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm committed to the, I want to be part of the group, so I'll figure uh, it out. Just to add, Saturday around that time, at least for me, would be fine because it's fairly early. So, yeah, time to go out and maybe. Okay, I make a doodle for both days and then we, we try to connect with the other people who are interested and then uh, we will figure that out. Yeah. So Saturday or Sunday at 10. Good. I write it down because I might forget it. So 10 would be uh, our time. We have said it would be five. 
or something. No, what was I'm, it? I'm sending you a screenshot of the different time zones so you can have it as a reference in the chat. Yeah. So I, I, I still have to get what it would be my our time, Damiano. Uh, what we, did we agree now on? How much time earlier than today did we agree on? Four, four hours. Four. Is that so that four would hours. be four o'clock in the in four our time. Action, yeah. Okay, good. I will send out the tool. Okay. Good. So we have done the administration, and now we can go and jump into it. Shall we talk about uh, uh, still some technical, Karen? When uh, Karen Forhes. If you don't speak, can you mute yourself? There comes a strange boom from your side. So you know how it works? Okay, good. So let's jump in. Let's explore what, what we find experiences, uh, special experiences, which we remember what we find annoying of Queen, for instance, whatever you want to say about Queen. <laughs> Ah, oh, I'll unmute myself again. Or, or Paul, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, okay. I, I have yeah. one from today, yeah. actually. It's kind of, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I can fully map this out. Uh, Karen, you were saying a little bit, it's like when you have one foot in green, you have one foot in integral, like it'd be hard to, because there's part of you that's uh, like having to do with your own shadow or uh, dealing with stuff like that. I find green, there's so much emphasis on the inner child. Um, which I certainly have a lot to work on, but there was, there was one thing that came up today and I've seen it quite a few times where it's like, I was thinking about my own experience of um, a lot of my integration of my inner child needs a strong inner adult or just a strong adult to have those two at once. Um, and I often see greens just, they're just sitting in this pain of the inner child or that's my sort of, funny, I, can, I can feel myself slipping into green. That's my projection. I don't think it is a projection. Um, there's another bit of green actually sort of like having to constantly question your your judgment calls but um i think yeah just how much that they kind of seem to revolve around the inner child um and if you start like leaning into adult i find you can uh, really start like ruffling feathers could, could you elaborate a little bit what, what you mean about inner child do you, do you mean like the sort of childish egocentricism? What, what, what do you mean exactly? Um, I, I have this thing, I think green like ends up dealing with a lot of um, the sort of wounded inner child. Um, I sort of, I don't wonder how much you elaborate. Like, I think a fair amount of psychology kind of boomed out in green. Um, I think from a certain stage, like I don't know about so much in the early days, it seems a bit more orange to me, but there, there's so much kind of emotional work. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of dealing with like the parts of your inner child that weren't met for whatever reason. Um, loads of emphasis on feelings. And sorry, if, if I can ask you just, just to, to help also for me understand exactly what, what would be by contrast, not uh, focusing on inner child and what would be an integration of that so that it, it's, it's clear the, the difference. Yeah. Um, I think I have to, to work with on the fly because I feel like this is part of my, my edge. I think one thing is like allow, being allowed to make judgment calls mm -hmm. about what's going on in my experience or in the groups or with somebody else. Um, sometimes actually like good advice is good advice. Like if you were just watching somebody and they're kind of uh, endlessly spinning around in, in pain or confusion, um, I see that like kind of... Uh, it's fine, I guess it's kind of in some ways hard for me to articulate, but it's like if an adult voice of clarity and especially power, like if, there, if there's something that feels empowering that seems to sort of, uh, my experience, kind of bump up against green sentimentality. There's, there's a lot of, I feel like a lot of emphasis on the, on the body. Like I always kind of joke with some very few intercourt people I speak to, there's a thing in, I do a lot of circling, so I don't know if people have, have, have know of, but there's all this, there's this thing of like people saying, I can't feel you, you feel like you're very in your head kind of thing. And I always want to be like, you know, I can't feel like you feel too much in your body. Like, can you get more in your brain? Like this thing of like being able to share um, of the intellect beyond just raw feelings is something that, that can drive me a bit crazy. Like, uh, 
I guess it's hard to articulate, but sometimes like there's lots of complex relational dynamics, or there is just lots of complexity even in talking about emotions. And it seems like that's often prejudiced against just like a raw expression of uh, feeling like, oh, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm abandoned, whatever. I think what you are talking to is that um, green is practically uh, re rejecting mental activities and or even reason you know and then uh, it comes out like as you say and I, I can add from my experience that when I was in the screen stage I deliberately did stupid stuff sort of because I, I deliberately uh, switched off my my <laughs> my my understanding you know my because i thought it comes all from the head it's everything that 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 is the 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 root cause of everything bad so better don't think about it and i did really i was fortunate that nothing has serious has happened but to the rejection of uh, let's say deep looking into cause and effect from a rational point point of, of view instead of a new age point of view you know so that's uh I think a problem with with Queen is it that what you mean, Paul? That that's only, that's definitely that's yeah. definitely a big part of it. I the think. value goes on only feeling, and before in Orange the value was only head. Yeah, so I think I, I there's an understandable backlash against being rational, but uh, at least in my experience, I don't know if this is an integral take on emotions, but I often find. I don't know, like, to me, it needs to be both, like, rationalizing my emotions and sort of understanding them. And I think what comes with that is, like, I'm not sure exactly how this is related, because I say I think some of it's my edge is, like, there's a certain amount of anger boundaries that, that comes out of that. And at times, I think you might have said this last week, Heidi, of, like, doing something about it. Like, so I feel this way. What do I do? kind of thing like that actually something uh, it's related a bit today but actually like watching somebody be in the pain of their inner child I just kind of wanted someone to come in with like a, a sort of nurturing motherly energy in this case to actually give some of this inner child uh, what it needs but it's kind of hard to uh, to do that because what comes in is like a degree of hierarchy that parent yeah, like the parent child dynamic itself speaks to hierarchy in I kind of feel like hierarchy is um, a fairly big taboo in Greenland. Yes, what's coming up for me here is, um, yes, the orange, we got stuck in our heads, and yes, look what we did with it, but then that was limiting and difficult. And with green, we got back in our bodies and our emotions and revalidated them. But then we get stuck there. Like that's what I was hearing in what you were saying, Paul, is, is and then we churn endlessly and don't know how to get out of that. I'm reminded of a, a story that was a serial that was very popular here in the 1980s. I live in Berkeley, California. So I got a lot of green stuff here. Um, uh, it was It was a satire on on current society and the phrase was everybody knew in this age of enlightenment that the rational mind was a screw up and the only authentic thing to do was to act on your impulses well that's a regression down to a much lower level and we it's easy to confuse that so what i'm hearing from what uh, the rest of us are saying is i'm seeing the dilemma of green is that yes we've gone back and reconnected with our vitality our juicy emotions and our instincts but but then we don't know how to get beyond that because hierarchic hierarchy is like way bad that's evil and so like to like come in with a structure like that's hierarchy we can't do that so we're left just churning in this endless um, emotional mess and and there's where integral i think really is the answer and i'd like to recommend here the book integral life practice with ken wilbur and terry Patton, two other authors there's a chapter in there on on working with the emotions that precisely treats this and that might be one of our topics if we like for one of our sessions is to go through that chapter and say exactly how it addresses these issues where you go deeper into what is the bottom line the real raw emotion and how do you work up from there back into um integrating it with the rest of us the body mind intellect spirit etc so. yes 
Yeah, the question, has everybody the book or something? I have it. I don't know. Highly recommended if you don't have it. Okay. Otherwise, we might even, I don't know if you can scan it in for, for others, uh, Karen. You, you are muted. I cannot hear you. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what did you just say? I missed. No, I said to the other Karen who showed ah. the book, if she has the possibility, maybe if it's not too long, the chapter for who has not the book to, to when, we, when you find the, 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 the chapter, which one you mean, and then we could do a scan and send it around. So, okay. I have it in German because that wouldn't really help you. <laughs> That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. It's an excellent book and, and highly recommended. It's, it, uh, there's a lot of good. And the, and the title, one more time. Is Integral Life Practice. OK. And the, there are several authors, but Ken Wilber is the first one listed. But it's, there's also Terry Patton and two other men. It's just, I, you can see the top of mine. I've got it bookmarked um, a lot. I haven't picked it up in a while, so this will be fun to pick it up and share it with you guys. That'd be great. Uh, if I may, can I jump in? Please. So uh, I think one interesting question to, to reflect on, if we want, could be what individually made us get out of green? Because we've all, we all been there, right? We all had our new age phase and some, some of us may be still be there. I, we all have these structures in our health. And so I think that understanding what triggers that switch can give a bit of insight into the structure. And I can share what was my experience of that. So as I, I was interested in meditation and all that stuff since I was uh, 14. Uh, I lived in Canada for a year where it was really new age, like just the, the general spiritual uh, sort of sentiment and I, uh, I at the beginning got very drawn to it uh, because it was just very novel for me and and at that point it sort of continued as a habit and the moment where it all sort of disappeared for me was um, I was doing uh, you know holotropic breathing it's, it's, a, it's like a breathing technique and sort of at the end of a cathartic experience where I sort of let go of all my, of a lot of tension, control and uh, fatigue. So it's sort of that surrender that we talk about a lot. At that point, I sort of began looking at all my beliefs and sort of screening out the ones that were obviously just irrational, like irrational in a way that it was not contributing to my understanding. And what that personally taught me was that the main reason I was holding on to so many of those uh, non-rational beliefs and the reason why I was leaving myself a very low burden of rational proof was just that I was attached to those things. They just worked for me and I needed those. And the moment I didn't need them anymore, they just went away. And so I don't think that's always necessarily the case, but th there is just, and, and I'm talking more about the spiritual side of things in green, so the, the new age component. But to me, that, that dropping of attachment was really what allowed me to feel more free to kind of really uh, discern with the, the different things. And if I may add a, a second thing, which is less important, is that there are, I think, depending on the country you look at, very different kinds of greens. I think that the North America has a, its own very clear flavor of green. But if you go in Europe, it is a little bit different. And to tie into what Ryan also echoed, we've seen, we have a history of totalitarianism. We have a history of, we've seen what no green does. And so a lot of the political attitudes of green in European environment make a lot more sense justified by the terror of what we've seen. Whereas in, in America, you have a bunch of greens running around who haven't seen that. And so it's kind of a more of a pantomime of it. And it, it feels a little bit more silly. And I think that that's one key element that also helps better understand, which is just the, the memory of what happened when there wasn't green there. 
Yeah, just to just to jump in here, <clears throat> um, there, there's a few things I just want to throw out there. Just to echo what Damiano just said about different kinds of green. I think a lot of people tend to associate, at least in America, people associate green almost synonymously with identity politics, and in some cases, particularly nasty incarnations of identity politics. But in Hawaii, where I'm from, the green in Hawaii has zero identity politics. I call it health food store green versus hipster green or health food store green versus like activist green. Hawaii only has health food store green. It's much of kind of like hippie back to the land, smoke some weed, go surfing and work on an organic farm. And you don't find that mean green edge in Hawaii. It's more like, it's kind of like, in some ways it's kind of like a healthy green because everyone is just there to spread the aloha. So I was very surprised when I moved to Portland and, and saw the nasty green. And I never really understood what that was until I moved to Portland because in Hawaii, the green is, everyone is singing kumbaya and holding hands. But, um, I, so, sorry, I'm kind of kind of jump around here, but this is one more question I wanted to ask to Paul, uh, just so I understand the concept uh, when we're talking about inner child and, and how that relates to green correctly. So I know that there's been a lot of psychological literature, maybe everything from like Jungian psychology to other forms of psychology, which have explicated about inner child work and so forth. That's not, I'm not necessarily really privy to that kind of literature, and I don't really view my own psychological life in terms of inner child or, or these kind of inner archetypal forces. So my, I guess my question with that and how it relates to evolving out of green is what is the idea in, in what you're trying to work with? Like what is the goal in working with the inner child? Is it to evolve the inner child into an adult? Is it to turn the, the wounded inner child into a healthy child? Or is it to just completely dissolve the thing to formless emptiness? Like what, what is the goal of working with the inner child? And how could that working with that evolve green to second tier stages? <laughs> um, I was coming with this question. It's funny. Like I realized how much, I guess it's sort of the challenge of green because I don't, I don't uh, know exactly. But um, I think for me personally, because I, I have a fair amount of trauma, and it, it's quite uh, to me like um, I don't know. It, it bumps up against just like brazenly being able to practically function. Um, so to me, it's kind of I, I suppose it's, it's running around getting these kind of unconscious parts of myself that have been uh, either mistreated or pushed away and uh, trying to integrate them, which is, I guess is probably two things of like, one is being aware of these kind of uh, younger parts of myself and then also trying to, to meet their needs. Um, I'm not sure if there was a question about uh, green, but I think that's just my judgment about what I see a lot of green uh, doing. I, I also think it's, um, it's also a fantastic thing of green like uh, being really sensitive, being um, kind of retroactive to a lot of things that, that come from orange, that in many ways, like the whole rational thing can be kind of like very anti the, uh, the child or the, the parts of us that can bond and connect and be in with the body and all this kind of stuff. Um, is that any clearer? I can jump in a little bit because I work also with the, this inner child thing. And um, the inner child, as I wouldn't call it inner child, but like Paul says, with younger selves, these are parts of us who are stuck in a certain level of development. And they can be in many different levels, can be as a baby, can be as 10 years, can be three days ago, you know. So it's always younger than you. And uh, the idea is that at this previous time of your life, you had less understanding and less tools to handle with a certain situation. And so you got stuck in this uh, moment. And so working with it is first of all, recognizing it, seeing it, because being seen is already um, something. <laughs> Just before I had a conversation with my sister, we are doing a sort of a small series about growing up in post-war Germany. And we were talking about education today, and there was uh, children and inner children, <laughs> even less, you know, there were rationality, you have to do this and blah, 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 but it was not about feelings. So it is to re recognize that the child has the feelings and they were not met and even often dismissed. And now when you can be now the adult, with all the resources you have today, create a relationship with these younger parts of you. And then 
first of all, explain them what has happened. Embrace them, first of all. Depends what age they are. Try to, to, to use a language which they can understand. Embrace them and then explain them that it often they have maybe guilt uh, issues or something, that it was not their fault, that there's something else uh, happening in the family, whatever. It's, uh, a therapeutic self-talk or something like that you can do. So you slowly re-educate and or re-heal this part of you, which was in total need and was all the time like limping because, you know, nobody took care of them. And now you, instead of your real parents or your real caregivers, you do that for you. And so you, they will always be younger selves, but they will be more, how can you say, more functional. They won't uh, block all the time against the, 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 the non-understanding and the feeling of being whatever the issue is in the person of feeling neglected, feeling alone, feeling not worthy, feeling not loved or whatever. So there are quite a bit of, of those things. And I find it a very valuable work. And I, what you say, uh, I think Paul, you said that when they keep uh, whining and keep uh, experiencing and uh, caring for the younger child, that's the first part. And then as an integral practice, you have to go further, you know, and, and bring, bring them up the educational or developmental, I would say, spiral uh, of their life, which they have uh, missed. And in some way, it's what the, Ken Wilber says with the turn, is it, do they say turning points between every level? That's the, the moment where things can go wrong. Uh, uh, I don't know, we say Drehpunkt in German. I don't know how he says it in English because I think most he calls of them the fulcrums. What? I think he calls them fulcrums. For that uh, can be, yeah, uh, yeah. So sometimes I don't know the expressions in uh, English because I mainly, if there was possibility, I read the books in German. So. Yes, Ken Wilber said fulcrum, but turning point is the English. It's the same word in English. Turning point. Okay. Good. So that has to do with these turning points when that was a uh, next step coming and that was sort of something was not yet right and you come to the next stage with, yeah, limping, let's say, with <laughs> parts missing. And for me, that's all about the, the, what it is about, the, the work with the inner child or younger selves, I would say, because they are not necessarily children. When you have a trauma with 30, you know, something gets stuck there too. It must not be in child age. So is this it more understanding about that, Ryan? What yeah, you thank mean? you. That was that was very helpful. Thank you. I'm trying to imagine a hypothetical human being who would be healthy at all levels. <laughs> I doubt if anybody human on this planet is there. I'm thinking of a verse by Leonard Cohen, ring the bell that still can ring, forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. And so what's coming up in me now is remembering that exactly the points where we are most wounded is where we have the chance to grow the most and move forward up the spiral the most too. They, these things can turn out to be great gifts. Yeah, as far as I remember, I've heard about studies who say that exactly growth happens when the challenges are there. And when you have everything leveled out, you stay young. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where Jakob is. He, he came and he disappeared again. So. We will see. No, this discussion seems to be really uh, segueing well into Damiano's question about what took people from green to uh, yellow or second tier. And just, just quickly, um, in 2018, I, I devoted all of my free time to reading the entire canon of Western philosophy. And I feel like that is what took me from green to yellow fully. Um, I mean, I'm not, you know, totally you know, bragging about my lofty. If everyone second. has to do that, it's going to be really hard to move. <laughs> together, huh? But um, I think for me, I was kind of stuck at a green at a certain 
place. It, it could have been a certain line of development, like maybe like intellectual line. And studying the philosophy helped me to deeper increase my cognitive line of development more quickly than anything I've in any way in leaps and bounds. And that quantum leap, I think, kind of transferred over to having the capacity, just the pure cognitive brain power to have to embody more and more features of yellow, like being able to adjudicate systems upon systems and having that fifth person perspective. And also really developing that rationality as sharply as possible and polishing that. Um, and that, that to me was kind of like my, because I was always doing the spiritual stuff and the meditating, but to me it was really the, the raw studying of everyone from Aristotle to Derrida that really helped me to take that leap myself. So I'll just throw that in there. I have a, I have a similar thing, which is, it's not to do with philosophy, but I think it's appreciating the, uh, the huge lineage we have through history. Like I think various ways, like literally from, um, I remember kind of appreciating like different uh, cultures in the past, like just how far we've come. I suppose the whole evolutionary um, kind of angle to see all that and kind of really bumping against green where it's kind of this, this ahistorical thing. And then also I think some of that was like, so my personal journey would, would be like, um, I remember when I was very green, my father used to annoy me endlessly, just kind of rational and like, oh, you have to do this kind of work and all this kind of stuff. And as I got older, like I actually appreciating um, his take more. So I think there was kind of like, um, I think appreciating slowly the, the levels below green kind of may have like started to shift me up towards integral. Well, I grew up green. I grew up in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area, going to Unitarian Church every Sunday with my mother. And I early developed an allergy to the irritating side of green, you know, the liberal guilt that, you know, I'm white, I'm awful. Um, and I've always been a humanities nerd with a love of history. And so, like, a couple of you have already said, it was just that sense I learned of history and philosophy gave me a sense of multiple perspectives. And I was off, in fact, in Munich. Heide, ich spreche auch Deutsch. Ich wohnte zwei Jahre in München. I, you know, I spent two and a half years in Munich doing my doctor research for my PhD in cultural history. And I found my spiritual path. It found it found me, it landed on me. I started meditating seriously. And I, as I said to Ryan in our interview, um, I got this opening that showed me that there are levels of truth and beauty way beyond the rational intellect. And it's just like, why am I wasting my time with academia, with intellect, pursuing truth at the level of the intellect when they're much higher? Well, that was just an opening. And of course it went away, but it was fortuitous for me because at that point, deconstructionism was just beginning its hostile takeover of the humanities. So I gleefully bailed out of academia. And around that time, I discovered the works of Ken Wilber and he gave me the intellectual framework for all this stuff that I had the bits and pieces of. He put it all together for me. And I've been putting it together in my own way as a historian ever since too, but um, it, I wasn't just scrambling around with all these pieces. Ken Wilber made it coherent for me. So this was kind of like, I think that was probably my boost beyond green because as Ken Wilber has, has, has said, green is this radical equality. It gets that we are all equally infinitely precious beings, but we're just heaps. There's no way to build a system out of it because any valuing of one thing over another, of one structure over another is like hierarchy and that's bad. So you end up with just these heaps and no system. But then with the integral, there is a way to integrate it into structures, into greater complexity, both of form and consciousness. And so that, that whole experience right around there, 1980, 82, just blasted me into integral. And Ken Wilber put the pieces together for me. <clears throat> and I've been playing happily with it ever since. So it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Well, I... Um grew up in Austin, Texas, which is a little liberal oasis in Texas, which is the butt of many jokes and should be the butt of many jokes. And I grew up in a part of town that was particularly progressive. 
and merrily being green and having a grand old time and then um, uh, and, and ignoring early tra childhood trauma that I experienced and, and, and stuffed it. And I had the great good fortune to hook up with someone uh, and spend 30 years with him and was able to um, uh, learn that it was okay to come out of the depths of my being that I had stuffed. I started being able to come out of it and be less about um, loving everybody and pretending everything's okay and being a little bit more in reality. And then as I shared with the group last week, um, he passed away and he had cancer for 15 years. And I got to witness and he was incredible. Uh, he, he was one of these people that were lucky to be around who had incredible dignity and taught us all how to live with dying. And I watched him go through his hero's journey and was able with him to go through and, and uh, my own hero's journey and with the support of the community as well. But it's, it's like um, the Bodhisattva way, you take your suffering and learn from it and then you share with what others what you've learned. So then I was able to translate this or transfer this into my, my acupuncture practice with my clients and be there for them uh, as you know, watching them go through their journeys. I'm less heady about all this. I'm more of a feeler. Um, and yet, and, and so I'm not able to put all this, uh, Karen, I really appreciate your ability to put things into words. California, Karen, um, no offense, Florida, Karen, uh, coming from a green. Uh, I, I'm more of the feeler and more of the, mine is more intuitive. And um, I find people who have been through journeys uh, who are who are on their hero's journey aware of their he hero's journey and less about being a victim and wearing that big old giant v for victim and you know nobody knows pain like i do very tiresome and um you know it's it's uh it's like the old saying there's always a, somebody who's more attractive than you in the room or there's always going to be somebody who has more victimhood in the room and and um i give up on that and so I, um, I am interested in taking what I've learned and applying it to childhood trauma. And I've had uh, excellent psychotherapy and, and continue to work with that. And then um, be able to find a way to plug in to a world, the integral world. Um, I'm kind of losing my track here, but into there's, you know, what's it all about? It's got to be more than just, you know, going through my inner child, going through all this. It, there's got to be more to life than just uh, being a victim. It's, it's about being able to embody this pain and then look at others and be able to be empathic and empathetic with their pain, as in looking at, at um, the tribal, the, the red, the ambers, and being able to look at their pain and instead of just flushing their thoughts and their opinions and their feelings as being not important by being able to be more comfortable with my own pain and uh, be authentic there, I can be more understanding of others and allow uh, a space for that. And so I get really uh, tired of my green friends who are just so fucking pissed off at you know, people in this country who just can't figure it out and their unwillingness to um, be able to walk into somebody else's shoes and go, well, you know, if, you know, if, if it weren't for where I am now in my life that I could very likely be, for example, a Trump supporter. Um, and one more thing I want to say, um, on September 11th, when the, the uh, planes flew into the buildings in New York City, I was really good friends with a, a, a woman friend named Kate Rose, and I was no longer able to be friends with her because she called me and was just ready to go and find who ever did this. We must kill them. We must torture them. We must torture their families. And it was just, that was also sort of a waking up for me, just going, you know, wow. So, um, um, I, I, yes, so I, I really embrace learning and moving forward and being able to be more um, able to understand 
others' points of view without and, and get away from that judgmental, critical self that I can so easily default onto. And that's all I have to say. Just a okay. quickie comment, Austin, Karen, it's that judgmental, angry, critical aspect of green that I am allergic to. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Just the, you know, the total unwillingness, you know, like, you know, I don't even want to think about it, you know, the total unwillingness to, yeah, go there. Karen Florida, do you want to say something? How is it that you are at least in, in, interested in, 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 in to grow? Well, everyone had an excellent point. I mean, there's no doubt that we've all gone through trauma and all have probably touched or felt what it would be if you embraced being a victim. But, you know, when I did that, what I got me out of it was when I learned that, well, the reason that I felt like a victim was because I didn't have any tools. I didn't have any tools, skills to, you know, make me feel or do anything differently mentally and feeling wise. And when I started to know that, um, you know, I was the type of person that I was going to get well because I think everybody wants to survive, but sometimes you see people going around in circles because they don't have the skills. And as I started to name that I needed a toolbox and I would learn a skill and put it in my toolbox and toolbox, then, um, you know, I, I, I think that was one way uh, that healing, but also Heidi, what you said, or, and I think someone else spoke on this, that that pain, when she realizes it becomes your greatest teacher and then you can help others and you have empathy and and you can always remember that because you were there right and i think that's an important point and then someone else um, i think paul touched on something that was um i wanted to remember but i think i've missed it now but um lots of good things in this conversation uh for sure um oh i guess i you know, I'm just like now learning integral. So I'm just now hearing about green kind of, but um, when Paul was speaking about the inner child and, and, and Heidi, you explained it so well too. Um, I was thinking of um, my, um, it's kind of like a spoiled child a, a little bit to where, but I'm also kind of thinking that that inner child is just someone that doesn't have the tools yet. Right. And so then the hierarchy thing um, doesn't sound right to me because that's not coming from teaching them love and trust. But when you can show that inner that child or the younger person, as we're the young say, the younger person that it's love that we're giving, it's understanding we're giving, it's trust. You can trust me. And and maybe I just um you know, it's, it's something that you, that you learn that you impart to somebody else that, you know, and I guess maybe that's where the phrase that when the student is ready, the teacher shows up. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I don't know. But good learning here for me. Okay, so then I can say a little bit in, as we said before, green is different in different countries. And for me, in the early 80s in Germany, we already separated the trash and did uh, plastic recycling. It was new. And so it was more the ecological part, green, where, where I came into touch with. And um, definitely, Ken Wilber, I learned much later. And then it came for me the understanding with the head. No, the theories and so I understood ah this is why and this is why and this is why and then I had several experiences here with um, Uzbekan people and Romanian people and and I met them with my green understanding of you know <laughs> and then I always was let down and then I after a while I understood yeah Theoretically, you knew that all, you know, when a red mindset and you come with green, offer them things and uh, the, you, you lend them the things, but they think they have uh, 
a right to take them with them. Uh, you know, that's too bad if, <clears throat> if you give me that, yeah, but I don't give you back anything, you know. So theoretically, I should have known that, but by the practical experience, how the mindsets clash and how I was stupid in my green to, to pretend that they would be maybe grateful for what I, want, I did for them or something, you know. And then I, that, I think that really made the switch. And I also realized how really stupid, practically stupid, a, a, a green ideology in this sense is. When you, when you think everything is, you know, you, you are so nice to everybody and you give them and they will be nice to you too and, and things. That's, it's just, it's not so, you know? And I think that was the real move in, in my understanding that I finally connected what I had learned in my head with, with reality. And since then, I'm appreciating very much that I can go into leadership again, because I participate in groups where people still shy away from leadership and it's all, you know, it never ends. And it's, yeah, it's sort of, for me, it's often a waste of time. And yeah, and that I can have hierarchies again, that I can say, oh, I want this and not that, you know, and without necessarily judging in a value way, but judging in a, uh, in a more practical way and, and, and seeing I have much interest also in psychology and I can now see more where the people are at and avoid believing or asking from them things which they cannot do, let's say in this way. So. Can I offer a, a thought on, mm -hmm. on all that was said? I think that... I tried to summarize what I could sense were the reason that sort of pushed people away from, from green. And, and I kind of find like three, you, you can actually map it in first, second, and third perspective. What, what you just described uh, is the idea that you in first perspective saw the other levels and saw the limitations of the model and you just had to readapt. So as a green in that moment, that worldview didn't work, so it just moved. But another thing that emerged a lot is the second person relationship with these annoying people from which you often feel alienated. I think Paul's experience, correct me if I'm wrong, but resonates with this sense of having to deal with people that don't fully uh, appreciate you completely or don't understand you completely. And then there is a third person, which is probably Ryan's, which is a third person perspective. It's like, you look at the model and it just doesn't make sense. And you use that perspective to, to transcend. And I just, I like it that it kind of fits with the, with the general model. And, and I think one of the, the things that at least I feel is that there's so little integral out there that there is not really any path of least resistance in terms of communication. Because I think that most integral concepts when applied to real world things make so much sense that people kind of immediately shift. Like, and, and I think we're just missing so much of that. And I think if that was available, that, that transition would be so much easier. And I think that we, we, we're missing that. I think it would be an interesting byproduct of these conversation at some point to, to be able to provide that. Great, thank you. You know what I was thinking, we should, uh, can you write that down? And we, we should um, sort of collect the highlights of what we are saying and, and write it and publish it wherever we want to publish. I say my website is done for that, so I'm fine with uh, having that. So we have a, a harvesting of what we are doing. That would be great because often people won't watch a long video. That's, by the way, brings me to the next uh, thing. How much time do we want to, to, to think? An hour and a half or two hours? Or one hour seems to be a little, little, no? Shall we aim for two hours? And if you have done before, we, we stop before or something? For me, an hour and a half is, works. Uh, two hours, I won't be able Maybe. to do today. Okay. Yeah, so, so let's say one hour and a half and who goes away goes away and who wants to stay, we, we can also continue. And when I do the recordings, the person who has to go away can then still uh, listen to what was said later. Is that okay with all of you? 
Yep. Okay, super. So how do you want to go on? I mean, we can continue with that. I think it's quite an interesting, an interesting can I, topic. Can I just ask Paul a very specific question? Paul, I'm, I'm an ignorant American who doesn't know anything about anything else other than American politics. What is the uh, scene like in England in terms of green and, and what is the integral presence like in England? I know it's, it can, it's very prominent on the continent of, of Europe, but I'm, I'm curious, what is it like in England for you? Um, the, the topic of green I can answer better than the integral, like, because I'm a bit, um, I don't know, I've got like quite a lot of trauma, so I don't really... Uh, go out and meet people enough to meet integral people so I'm not really sure um, the extent or no although I know there are there are some elements of it I know there were things with the Latinx and they were pretty integral and stuff like this um, on the the thing with green I mean I would say it's pretty it's pretty there's plenty of bad green in um, in England like um, it's funny I can sort of feel the taboo of talking about it like there, there have been answers with um, for example we have we have some fairly big problems with some elements of Islam, like there, there was a big case, like Rotherham, where there was thousands and thousands of young girls that were raped by grooming gangs. And part of the reason that they kind of could get away with that is the, the police were worried more about being seen as racist than actually protecting uh, young girls. Um, and there's just a lot of kind of culture of like, I, I'm not sure that it's that dissimilar to uh, what it is in America. It's just, it's just kind of like slightly different issues. There's like so much, like you're racist for so many things, like having borders or just all this kind of stuff. There's there's a lot of kind of, I guess it depends what you call green, but I see a lot of dysfunctional feminism, for example. Um, lots of kind of man bashing, um, lots of kind of craziness like that. We, we had Brexit. Um, so in similar ways to, maybe it's not that similar to Trump's wall, but kind of like calling half of the population essentially kind of racists or something because they were they were up for pulling out of the European Union. Um, so I don't, I don't know if it is that different to America, actually. I think it's just slightly different issues. Um, my take on it would be it's kind of more or less the, the same, same kind of stuff. We have like transgenderism, that's a big debate. Gender's obviously a big debate. Um, race, yeah. Political correctness, it's kind of a constant pain in the ass. I, I can add something, having, having chatted with some uh, British people recently about this, and one of the girls was saying that she works for a, for a company that does you know, uh, that, that works in the third sector, nonprofit and stuff like that. And she was saying that she couldn't say that she was a Christian. Like she, she came from South America and she literally felt embarrassed to admit that she was a, a Christian uh, or to eat meat at, at any time. And I think just the <laughs> fact that she, she felt the sense of unease in, in, in saying those things just was very... Uh, strange to me, I think, in continental Europe, that things are a little bit quieter. Uh, but, I, but, it, but I do resonate with the, what Paul has said. And uh, sorry, uh, Paul, if, if I can touch on one of the things you mentioned earlier, uh, and I think this, uh, it may be interesting to have this conversation since we have so many women in the, in the room. I think that the, the gender component of, of green is, is, is really one of the key uh, elements. I think that, um, and, I, and I don't know how, how we want to elaborate, but it would be interesting to know your take uh, on gender and green and, and what, what is your sense of that. And by you, I mean everybody, especially the, the women in the room. What I, what I can share is my experience, and I think I could sense a little bit that Paul in what you were saying in terms of the therapeutical process in green is that they're a lot imbued in this green feminine sort of structure and I think that men often feel alienated from it like they feel that quant I, at least I myself felt very often out of place and I had actually this rule when I was trying meditative practices and techniques that I, I would generally not do a technique where there was only women in the room because I, I, under, I knew that it would not speak in a language they would understand and I would not go to a place that had only men. And when I found 
a group of people that were doing, in that case, holotropic breathing, uh, they were following the integral model and there was an almost equal distribution of male and female. And I found that to be very interesting. I find that that, that was a really good indication of integration in the way things are uh, communicated. And I, I think that there is a, 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 gen, a, a different experience of green depending on uh, what, what side of the gender spectrum you, you are. I don't know whether you guys or gals agree with it. I find it funny that you talk about gender because just, I think it was only yesterday or today, I thought on integral life, there are always men talking. Jeff Sosman, uh, Keith Witt, uh, who else, Corey and whoever. And where are the women, I was saying. And that's, it's almost, I would say, uh, uh, untypical that we are more, more women here than, than men. So I don't know. It seems also who is writing is much more men writing in the forum. I don't know. But, sorry, if I may elaborate on that. Probably it is because the, the integral, I mean, obviously, the integral field has been built a lot by men. And, and probably if it was to be rewritten by women, it would be told in a completely different way. To eco Karen, acupuncturist Karen, I find that Taoism has a huge amount of things in common with integral theory. It's the most integral structure of representation of consciousness, I believe, together with integral theory. But it has a different vibe. It has a less cerebrotic vibe. So that it would be interesting to see how, if we could be, be rewritten by zero from a woman, how would that be? And I, I guess there are many examples of that, but they're not as prominent. And just, oh, oh sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I, I went to the What Now conference in Denver a little over a year ago. You know, Ken Wilber and all the luminaries were there. Um, it, was, it was wonderful. It knocked my socks off, but there were um, three to four men for every woman presenters. And I noted that at the time. <laughs> I mean, I've been noting this too. Uh, the, the, the imbalance in this, what has seemed to me be, to be a very top-down structure. Uh, as I've tried to move into integral circles, and it's it's almost entirely men at the top and almost entirely men who set up the theory. So far, so good. But at that conference, which was a one of one of the great experiences of my life, and here there were four or five men, male presenters to every female. And what I also noted was that without an exception, the female presenters were much more in their bodies, and hearts, and just the whole system working together where almost without exception, the men were firing through their intellects. They were heads on sticks. It was so stark at the time and everybody was terrific. They were all terrific human beings, maybe one exception. I won't say who, but it, you, you couldn't not, I couldn't not notice the difference. So that's it. And, and Ryan, you were gonna say something. Well, I was just gonna jump on the identity politics bandwagon and say, well, we're all the people of color in, in integral. I mean. For me, you know, the, the, okay, I'll just, I'll just say my position on, on how much diversity and that kind of thing matters is that I really do not care a lot about uh, diversity of like race and that kind of thing. If you're talking about subjects like physics or lower right quadrant issues that have nothing to do with race or like, you know, history of the universe and whole ons and that kind of thing. But I'd like at least one minority voice present when the integral guys who are dominated by cisgendered white male, no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, phallogocentric, no. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, j just having some diversity of perspective, like for example, uh, Diane Musho Hamilton, who's a wonderful integralist and Zen teacher, she teaches mm -hmm. something called Inclusion 2.0 in uh, Utah. And it's for people who teach inclusion. So it's kind of like an integral version of diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings. And all four of the presenters are white. And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I think that's fine for a lot of things, but I'd like to have at least one person of color if you're talking about race and how to develop a teal version of diversity, equity, inclusion, which is well, something I'm extremely interested in doing. And then using that as my infiltration of green to bring healthy green into teal is to have, a, to encourage a teal discussion around things like race. I, I'm not very privy to the, uh, gender issues. That's not really my forte, probably because I'm a man and probably because I'm more interested in things like race. But um, yeah, that's, that's also something that sometimes I get a little irritated when, when Ken and Corey, like yesterday, they did a presentation on integral life on controversial issues, which is the topic that I had broached on the forum. And they, they avoided almost every uh, topic on race, I think because they kind of felt uncomfortable talking about those things. 
as as two white. So that's another advantage of having a minority. I can say all the politically fucking correct things I want to, incorrect things I want to, and and get away with it more. So I think that it's it's also helpful to to bring in those perspectives. And uh, the, the, the the challenge for me is, you can't force these things, right? I, you can't just go out there and force them. And it's like, you can be aware that you're dominated by white people or men or whatever but you can't have forced diversity because people are not interested or they're just not you know as many um so so maybe i'll be able to go full on green and ride the race card into the interval conversation no i'm kidding <laughs> this is great because i wanted to say it's like with women if women are not interested in doing certain things you cannot push them into that and if uh, with the race thing if people are wanting to do it, welcome. But only because you're of a certain race now you have to do it, it's, it's, it's not good. So what, what I think what probably the whole community could do to, to invite more people of, uh, of other races, maybe, you know? I don't know. Uh, it's true. It came from the white thing and it came from the male. Uh, and so we women, we see that more in, in gender. And I wanted to say to Karen, a uh, historian, um, I watched um, the what now or what, yeah, it was what now, but also the pre previous one, what next, we were in live stream watching it. And that was exactly what I thought. And I would all of you invite you to come to the Hungarian conference because it's completely different. <laughs> First of all, there are a lot of women there are also more races, not, not really equal, but, but you know, there are people from India or from, <clears throat> I don't know where, uh, they are there. And it is balanced between uh, mind stuff and, and experiential stuff. It's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's, you know, people come ever more also from America because they have understood that there is more a more integral inter conference, while the American one, I didn't find it integral at all. <laughs> Only the oh, subject. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started out, Ben says started out, Ben Seganti, he is, has founded a long time ago, he's a psychologist uh, in Hungary, uh, the uh, Integral Academy, and he did the first uh, conference six years ago, also four years ago. And uh, he really has a, a different concept. He is also a shamanistic training. Mm -hmm. And uh, from, as he comes from psychology, he, and he is a great orange, great um, businessman also to, to, to risk that and to do all that. So, and the, if, um, the, uh, the, the, the success is mind blowing and people come, and at the beginning we started out only for to see what is integral available in Europe. So there was an <clears throat> invitation to people who think they are working integrally to, to become presenters. And then now it has spread also to the whole, whole world. But it was astonishing already the first time there were 250 people doing presentations and workshops and everything. Really, really, really good. What is Yeah, it makes me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Heidi, what was the man's name that you were just mentioning? Ben Seganti. How do you spell it? Half the time in, uh, in, in, in California, half time in Hungary. He's still Hungarian. <clears throat> Can you spell his name, please? Uh, ben Se B E N C E. And Ganti is the second name. Uh, G, uh, G A N T E. And Thank they you. have some accents somewhere, but that I don't think you need them. Okay, thank you. Integral European Conference, when you Google that, they also have uh, some of the videos on YouTube. It's really, I mean, this year we couldn't go, but I, uh, next. I now am about, I hope I find somebody to take care of my animals here, to subscribe for the Integral African Tour in South Africa, and there will be the first South African conference, integral conference. So wow. to say for racism, uh, things are shifting a little bit. So it will be in May and I, I hope I can go because, you know, uh, do such a, a tour, we will go to, to the blue and the red places in, in, in South Africa. They will show it to us and to, 
to go there with an integral bunch of people, I do, do think it will be nice because on after the last conferences in, in Hungary, we always had a three who wanted a three day tour through Hungary and it was always great. So if the South African tour is like this, if you have time and the money, it's uh, really good. I mean, the dollar is now a little bit expensive for, I mean, other way around. Uh, the euro is a little bit expensive, but maybe with African money, it's not so bad. You have to figure that out. So, when when is this conference? The 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 conference itself is from the fifth to the seventh of July, and the tour begins on the twenty eighth of June. If you can come, I would be happy because uh, <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> Also as a little bit of recompensation for the last year, which was not really super easy for me. And I want to go out once of, of, of everything here. So, and have a good experience. And as I had the experience of the conferences, I'm quite sure that is influenced. He will be there too. It's influenced by his uh, example. So it will be good. I, I hope so. I was just going to say, like, I think to some extent the movement um, struggles with, like, diversity generally. Like, um, just kind of that the, there aren't that many voices. Like, I don't know if anybody knows the facts, but is there an estimate that integral people are, like, 5% or something of the population? Which, if I actually think about it, that's, like, that's actually a lot of people. Um, that's, that's one of the things I get quite sparked up about going on these Zoom calls because... Um, I think there kind of have been these problems of kind of elitism and like not having, I think maybe for various reasons, like maybe there weren't enough um, systems thing, like just having Zoom as a technology seems to me to be like really useful to have integral people uh, to talk together. And I know that's kind of um, some of my motivation more these days where it used to be a lot more kind of heady is more the sort of interpersonal relationships. Like to some extent, just talking to someone who's integral is going to help me to evolve, like regardless of uh, what we're talking about. Um, I was going to talk about, like, to me, I, I don't know if anybody knew in Latin Next, but there was some fairly major mess ups, and I think they're quite a good poster child for what was wrong with some of Integral. And, like, not to, as I say, kind of throw the baby out of the bath for, but I think there is another benefit to having more, more diverse voices of, like, calling things out that aren't getting voiced or maybe just being a unique voice to be like, oh, this really isn't getting much talks about. Like um, there was a mention of um, gender. And in some ways I do find the integral movement is a bit like uh, male dominated. I think partly because there's a shift away from green, which in some ways, at least in my experience, seems a bit more feminizing um, in a good way. But like what I find kind of paradoxical and one of the things that I find doesn't get enough uh, talk about in integral is like men's uh, men's issues and men's rights, which personally I think could balance out the gender in the sense of women are more powerful than feminists make out, um, and also men aren't the uh, men aren't kind of all powerful in patriarchy. And I think part of the thing I, I like about that is like one of the biggest voices for men's rights was or is Warren Farrell, who always to me seemed pretty damn integral and balanced. Um, I think he was, you know, he was on the board for feminism for years and years and years, the only guy. So he's kind of a great symbol for uh, for that. So yeah, that's, this is my take. Yeah, Warren Farrell is considered integralist, you know, and he is. And you can find many of his uh, interviews also on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> interesting, very interesting. And he is now taking very much uh, as a voice for men, for not so much rights as we shouldn't be so much concerned about rights, but about the uh, the consideration or the value giving giving value to 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 all you know to women as well as to men, and to avoid to to ideologize all all this stuff, you know. So. He is a great voice, uh, definitely, definitely. So I don't know if you know him. No. So it's 
good thing to 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 look him up and see in his work. He has his last book was the Boys Crisis, mm. and uh, the other book I have it here somewhere is the Myth of Male Power. Um, where he is more, you know, also scientific. He, he collects studies on these things and and says that's just not true. What what we think. <laughs> For me as well, because I, I've been quite interested in the men's world, I actually find myself pulling away from it. But I feel like there's a particularly niche um, vantage point. Like, I almost see the gender debate needs to go to integral. Like, I actually think, like, I get sick of hearing, or actually, as I said, kind of like pulling myself away from some of this men's world because I find it too uh, balanced. Like, you kind of have a feminist extreme and having the men's extreme and... I can't get to the point of like gender makes no sense to me unless uh, they're seen as related, um, seeing both sides of it, which in a very simple way just seems to me to be very integral. And, and I think one of the problems in, you mentioned Paul, this 5% of this, hopefully 5% of integral people on the world. The problem is that I think 99.9% .9 of them don't call themselves integral. So I think there's a, there's, because they, that, I mean, cognitive categories exist outside of categories. And, and see, there's a big problem now in, in finding those groups and organizations who are at that level, but haven't labeled it as a cognitive structure. And I think it would be really interesting to herd all these communities together, even though they don't identify yet as integral. I think it would be an ex, a more expanded conversation uh, with people who are more or less anyway thinking the same things. Yeah, and I think I think it's more timely now than than ever. Like I think of my own experience of integral with over like ten years. Like uh, I can remember what the political situation was like, and it really seems like the ass end of green is like really really loud these days. And I also look at people like um, I always find kind of Jordan Peterson, for example, like a kind of love hate relationship. But like my take, it I think some of that is the reason he's so popular is he's like, he's kind of almost integral. Or well, there's kind of like, he's kind of wrestling with this stuff to pull out of green. It's kind of a shame that there's not something that's more. Uh, he's a mean yeah. integral. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe, uh, like some of the critical of the, the elitism of integral i mean that may be to some extent some of the time as well like not to sort of let everything off the hook but maybe some things make it easier and um i don't know it'd be, it would it would just be really nice if it got a lot more uh grassroots and ground and rooted active in the world yeah and as you said um uh, jordan peterson he has the gift to convey his message why Ken has it not? It's uh, too too boring what he is doing. So maybe a subgroup like we maybe maybe we find already David Stewart, uh, David Stewart uh, Stewart Davis. <laughs> he is already you know is a showmaster and is doing things differently. We need to have a different way to bring it out into the world. I think it's very nice that we are talking between each other, but when we really want to bring it out into the world, we need a... Agreed, learn. we totally agreed, agreed. We need, a, we need to get beyond the vocabulary. What Ken Wilber has done is absolutely critical and brilliant, and he's up there with Plato and Kant and all those people, but it does not connect with anybody but a, beyond a very small group. And part of our job is to transmute and translate Ken Wilber for the rest of humanity and come up with a set of concept and vocabulary that does reach normal human beings. And that's part of why I'm trying, you know, it's part of my work now as a writer. And I'm trying to take this into fiction in a story. And that means developing a set of concepts and vocabulary that connect with people viscerally. Not, not necessarily just through the intellects. Yes, I think that is the great challenge before us. Yeah, and also that artists take it on more. We have in Germany a group is called the Integral Road, Road, uh, Road Group. Now I've forgotten how it is, but they, they do really see it uh, about integral topics. And that, that's fun, you know. We, we need to, to, to find ways to 
could be a little bit more interesting. <laughs> anyway, I think we are sort of uh, over the one and a half hour mark. And for me, we could stop here. I don't know if somebody wants, we could do a checkout round. And if there is something burning, bring it out now and not after half an hour. <laughs> well, our job is to have fun. I agree. Yes, very nice. Lots of learning here. Thank you. Um, I think I find it very fascinating, like both sides of it, like we talked a lot about green, like I find the, the kind of, um, I don't know, like I can feel myself challenged kind of energetically in my mind, like listening to everybody, um, the kind of integral voicing but then also like validating the loneliness or the difficulties of green i find particularly useful like feeling really empowered and also um touching on the diversity like hearing everybody's different voices and the different kind of things they're interested in or just this different stuff they say just kind of for me really pulls the the integral down into into the earth i just feel like uh every time i come from these calls i just feel really fired up and more um I guess a little bit more like finding my tribe more than normal as well. That's awesome. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And I'm really happy to be here with everyone. My, my parting remarks will be, and that's exactly why we need to start the integral political party and I'm running for president in 2032. And uh, it, get, get the thing out there and force it. And, and, have, and if you instantiate integral consciousness and integral values in a political party, I cannot think of a more quick way to spread that message that can relate to everyone. Everyone wants it, everyone needs it. And I think we can, we can really get something going there through politics. So I'm kidding about running for president, but I, th I don't nah, think I should. Nah, 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 now you said it, now you said it. <laughs> it's, on, it's on record. <laughs> it's on the record. Yeah, and Ryan, I want to say as maybe the oldest here in the group or among the oldest, I really appreciate your initiatives and your learning curve with the videos and you are preparing for something like running for president and that's really great and whatever we can do to support you in that and also with the races, race the question, you know, uh, it's good, really. Mm. Thanks God there Thank are people you. like you and we hope we find mm. more and more and more who will step up and do do the work which is needed and great. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Who else wants to check out? Well, I, um, I will check out, I have guests coming soon. And uh, to go back to where we were talking about the men at the top of Integral, I got the first degree in women's studies at the University of Texas. And, um, and uh, I have not read a book written by a man, a fiction book written by a man until about, oh, say, five years ago. Um, so I will own that and um, I'm, I'm whatever. But I read tons of nonfiction books by men and um, I, uh, I can't help but, but want to see. I would love to be able to come to Europe and participate in the much more integral, it sounds like, um, conference that you have. I don't think that's going to be able to happen for me soon, but um, where are the other voices? And um, let's bring them in here if we can and share and um, learn from each other. Thank you. Thank you. And no offense, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you have uh, spoken also. I, I'm a little bit like facilitator, so I... I'm going to go. Thank you. And I will see you all next week. Yeah, fine. Take care, and Damiano, uh, can you send me if you have this, um, what you have um, some notes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll try. I don't have a lot, but we can, yeah. we can maybe okay. have a quick call to, to summarize some things. Good. Okay. And I could also next time remind me that we can ask each other to, uh, to, to take a little bit of notes and then at the end we can put them together. That would be good. Because I do my shows all the time. I, I do the whole, go through them and do the timestamps. But, you know, a two-hour video or oh, it takes too long. It would be better to do it while we are doing it. Okay. See you next Sunday at 
four o'clock our time and very early for the Ryan. You have to go to bed at eight o'clock the day before. <laughs> have fun, guys. Have a good meeting. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye Thank, bye you, everyone. Thank you Thank for you, being everyone. here. Bye bye. Aloha. Have a good week. Bye bye. Hello.